Hi everyone, welcome to our video lesson on 10-1 circles and circumference. It's our very first video lesson for chapter 10, and chapter 10 is entitled Circles. So let's first get familiar with a few terms that are very basic and introductory when we talk about circles. Let's first define what a circle is. A circle, the formal definition, is it's a locus of all points in a plane equidistant from a point. So typically we can make this with a compass. So what it means by it's equidistant from one point, where the needle of my compass is, that's going to be the center of the circle. And then I can make the circle as small as I want to just by bringing my marker in, or as big as I want to just by bringing my marker out. And then I simply, of course, just make a circle because all of these green points are the same distance from the needle. And so that is what a circle is, where the circle is made by the marker being the same distance away from the center of the circle as I trace it all the way around. Okay, So that's the formal definition of a circle. It's a locus of all points in a plane equidistant from a point. So the very middle, like I said, where that needle is, that's called the center. And we, the reason why this is important is if I call this point, point J, for example, the circle is named by its center. So then we would call the circle, circle J. Or if the circle, if the center of the circle was point H, then we would call the, the circle, circle H. So make sure that you um, have that written in your notes as well. A chord is a segment with endpoints on the circle. So there's an infinite number of chords in a circle. I could have drawn the chord from here to there. So it's just a line segment with endpoints that are on the circle. So it's not like it stops right here. That endpoint isn't on the circle. It has to have one endpoint on one end of the circle and the other endpoint on the other end. They have to be on the edges or on the end of the circle. We also have a diameter, a very common term when talking about circles. It's a chord that passes through the center. So again, there's an infinite number of diameters that we could draw in a circle. I could have drawn the diameter from here to there, as long as it goes through the center of the circle. From here to here is another diameter, as long as it goes through the center of the circle. The diameter is the longest chord that can be drawn in a circle. This chord right here is obviously significantly smaller than the diameter, the length is. Um, and that's because the, the furthest distance is to go right through the center of the circle. A radius is half of a diameter. So a radius is a segment with an endpoint on the, on the circle and at the center of the circle. So once again, there's also an infinite number of radii that I could draw. So this radius that I have right here is one, but I could have drawn the radius from here to here. And that distance is going to be the same, the radius from here to here that distance is going to be the same. Radius from here to here, that distance is going to be the same. If the diameter is 14 inches, then all of these are 7 inches, 7 inches, 7 inches. If the radius is 140 inches, then 70, 70, 70 is each radius. So the radius is half of the diameter. And then a big term that we talk about with circles as well is circumference. The circumference is the distance around a circle. So if we think about perimeter for polygons, that's the distance around a polygon is the perimeter. Circumference is that term for circles. So how, if I were to take a string and I were to take that string all the way around this circle and then I were to measure it up against a tape measure or a ruler or something like that, how long would it be? That's what circumference is. Interestingly enough, the way we find circumference is it's always 3.14 approximately times the diameter of the circle. So if this diameter is 3 feet long, then we would say that the radius or that the circumference is here would be like one diameter, there's 3 feet. Here is two diameters, so there's 6 feet. Here is a third diameter, so there's nine feet. And then there's this 0.14 from here to here. So for every circle, there is 3.14 diameters that go around it. Or because we have this other equation right here, circumference equals 2 pi radius, 
two times radius is diameter. So these two formulas are really saying the same thing. If we're given the radius of a circle, we can multiply it by 2 and multiply it by pi. If we're given the diameter, we can just multiply it by pi, which again is approximately 3.14. It's actually an irrational number that goes on forever, pi is, but for our purposes, we'll say it's 3.14. All right, those are all the terms that you need to write down in your circle book, so make sure those are in there. Now, if you want to take out your other notes packet, we're going to be doing some example problems. This one is talking more specifically about the diameter and radius of a circle and getting familiar with that. The diameter of circle X in red and circle Y in like purple and circle Z in like a teal color are 22, 16, and 10 millimeters respectively. So find each of these. So find E to Y. Well, maybe let's just, let's just get every distance from each endpoint in our circle here, in, in our three circles. So if circle X, which is the red circle, is a diameter of 22, that means that this has to be 11 from E to X. EX, that segment, is 11 millimeters. And the same thing from X to F. So like the radius of circle X is half of 22, so it would be 11. And then if circle Y is 16, that means that from here to here must be half of 16, because if y is the center of the circle, then to the end point is a radius, so half of 16 is 8. And then again, from x to f, that's, that's the radius of circle x, and, and the diameter of circle x is 22, so the radius must be 11. So that means from y to f must be 3, right? Because 8 plus 3, that segment equals 11. OK, so we got that down. And then it says circle z, its diameter is 10. So that means z to f must be 5. And from z to g must be 5, because there's your radius of 5 to make the diameter of 10. All right, we got every measurement on here that we need. So now let's answer these questions. Find the distance of segment EY. E to Y is 11 plus 8. Right? Isn't that what you see? 11 plus 8. So 11 plus 8, that is 19 millimeters. What is the segment from E to G? So the whole distance from all three circles. So we could just add up all these numbers. 11 plus 8 is 19. 19 plus 3 is 22. 22 plus 5 is 27. 27 plus 5 is 32. Whew, 32 millimeters. Or what you could have done is it's basically circle X, this diameter, plus circle Z, this diameter. So circle X is 22 millimeters. Circle Z is 10 millimeters. What is 22 plus 10? 32. So you could have done it that way as well. Find the distance from Y to G. So Y is right here. G is right here. That segment is 5 plus 5 plus 3, or 13 millimeters. Let me know if you have any questions on that. Hopefully that makes sense. Here it says, find the circumference of a circle with a radius of 10 inches. Well, if we want circumference, there's two formulas for circumference. Circumference equals 2 pi r or pi times diameter. Circumference also equals pi times diameter. They give us the radius, so let's use the formula for Circumference that involves the radius. So what is their circumference when 2 is multiplied by pi is multiplied by the radius of 10? So let's have our answer in two different ways here. We would call this our exact answer. It's 20 times pi, so 20 pi inches. That's called our exact answer. Let's also approximate. Some people like to approximate by putting 3.14 or actually using the pi button on your calculator. So if you use the pi button on your calculator, 20 times 3.14159265535, all that, blah, 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 you would get approximately to two, de to two decimal places, seven, oh, sorry, 
62.83 inches. And technically, I shouldn't have put an equal sign in there because it's not equal to 62.83. It's rounded. It's approximately equal to 62.83. So these two answers essentially say the same thing. One has an exact answer where you keep it in terms of pi. The other is where we use 3.14159926, all that, multiplied by 20 to get approximately 62.83. This one says find the diameter of a circle with a circumference of 25 feet. So again, we know the circumference, and there's two formulas. That are, it's either pi times diameter or circumference equals 2 pi radius. So let's use the equation for the information that we're given. It says find the diameter, so I'm going to want to use this equation because that one involves diameter. This time we know what the circumference is, so 25, we're going to substitute you in for C because we know the circumference is 25 feet. So 25, you are the circumference, you equal pi times diameter. So let's again have our answer in two different ways. The diameter of this circle with the circumference of 25, we would divide both sides by pi. So diameter equals 25 over pi feet. And that's our exact answer. Now let's approximate. So let's use our calculator and divide by the pi button. 25 divided by pi, or 24, 25 divided by approximately 3.14, is approximately... 7.96 feet, 7.96 feet. Again, one answer is approximate, one answer is exactly. Last one for the day, it says find the circumference of the circle. And it says leave pi in your answer, so have an exact answer, don't round. So I want to know the distance around this circle. Well, the distance the circumference is equal to pi times diameter, or it's equal to 2 pi times the radius. Are you given the diameter of this circle? No, you are not. Are you given the radius of this circle? No, you are not. What the world? What are we supposed to do now, right? Can you find the radius, or can you find the diameter? Hopefully, you say, yes, we could find this diameter because it is also acting as the hypotenuse of this right triangle. So if it's acting as the hypotenuse of the right triangle, we could use a squared plus b squared equals c squared, the Pythagorean theorem, to find the diameter d. So 16 squared plus 30 squared, that has to equal the hypotenuse squared, which in this case is our diameter squared. All right, let's find the diameter. 16 times 16, 256. 30 times 30, 900. That equals our diameter squared. We add 900 and 256 to get 1156. That equals our diameter squared. We square root 1156 to get our diameter. And our diameter, the square root of 1156, is 34. Diameter equals 34. So now I can use this formula and say the circumference of this circle is 34 meters times pi, times 3.14. And that is going to be our answer, because we're going to leave our answer in terms of pi. So 34 pi meters. Hopefully that makes sense. It should have been, a lot of it should have been review. Um, let me know if you have any questions on that when you get to class tomorrow.